Glory Review family. Thank you for joining us. Want to say hi to everybody? <laughs> oh, just worship with us this morning, amen. For His love awakens us, amen. Actually, you know, there's there's a lot of strangeness to to uh, the wedding days right now, and, and uh, um, a lot of disruption, um, uh, disrupted uh, graduation ceremonies. Uh, all this expectation of all these years of hard work, and and this expectation of having that celebration. This there's obviously um, disrupted economic prosperity in our world right now, and 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 it's tragic. There's generalized fear. There's a lot of loneliness people are feeling. Um, there's, there's, and some of this you can actually document because there's an increase in, in people with mental health crises going on right now and, and, and an increase in, in domestic violence incidents. And, and my, my daughter is one of those high school students, uh, those high school seniors who's, whose uh, rite of passage into the adult world has been disrupted. You know, those last couple months of of a senior year are supposed to be just this amazing time, and, and, and it's just very odd. She's the youngest of our four kids, and, and I've been reflecting on our life, you know, um, over these last weeks, and as we hit this milestone in our family, and, and, um, and I want to tell you a story that I think illustrates some, uh, something that's really important for a COVID-19 world to know. 
and it's this. Um, several years ago, when, <clears throat> I mean, she was probably in elementary school. My daughter decided that we needed an aquarium, okay? And, and uh, um, she promised she would take care of it, which, of course, is, is kind of a kid to code, that meaning, Dad, you're going to take care of this thing. And, and uh, um, anyway, we got the aquarium, and one weekend, we were home alone, just the two of us, which is kind of unusual. So I said, Lauren, let's go to the... Let's go to the, the store and get some more stuff for the aquarium. And, and, and so we added a structure, and then we, 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 uh, we bought this kind of orange swordfish kind of fish. I'm not sure what that thing's called. And, and then we called these things I'd never heard of before, these things called loaches. Okay? Loaches look kind of like small eels. Okay? And, and we got three of those. And, and we were warned, because we had this catfish that was kind of big, we were warned that the catfish might eat the loaches and stuff. And so we picked out some loaches that were kind of big, thinking that the catfish couldn't handle that. And, and, um, and, and so Lauren just loved the loaches. Okay, we put them in the tank and stuff. And, and, and shortly after we put them in the tank, I went and looked in the tank, and one of the loaches were gone. Couldn't, couldn't find it. I'm like, oh, great. Looking at that catfish looking at the two loaches that are left. And a couple hours later, another one's gone. And I'm like, oh, Lauren, she loves the loaches. And, 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 and there, was, there were actually two catfish in the tank, and, and I'm looking at them, and I'm thinking they're looking a little sluggish, like they're maybe digesting something. And, 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 and I stare at those fish for a long time, wondering, trying to comprehend how fish that size could eat a fish that was pretty big, I thought, you know, loach. Well, that was Friday night. My daughter had fallen asleep, and, and I went to bed. Before I went to bed, I went to check on the fish one last time, and the third loach was nowhere to be found. It was, it was I, I looked for a long time, and, and, and so I was confused with a shrug. I went to bed, and, and, and I mean, they were gone. Then in the morning, I go out and look at the tank, and it felt like a resurrection. There was not one, there was not two, there were three loaches somehow in that tank. And, and, and later I discovered there was this little pinprick of a crevice underneath this rock that we had inside the tank. And, and, and believe it or not, I figured out that these loaches somehow could squeeze themselves inside of that little crevice and they'd been hiding there. I had lost hope. I thought they were goners for sure now, that's a silly story to remind us of a very important thing. It's this, that God sometimes hides. He hides hope. He hides light inside of these pinprick crevices that you can overlook and, and not notice. Okay? And this morning, I think that's an important thing for a COVID-19 world to remember. Jesus had disappeared. In fact, he had died. And it was a relative pinprick of a place, a small cave in God's vast world that he was placed. And on, a, on that Friday night, all day Saturday, all Saturday night, his followers were sure that catfish had eaten them. They were sure he was gone. Now, prior to his death, Jesus warned his followers not to lose hope. But they did anyway. And Friday and Saturday were hopeless days. Hope had disappeared under a rock. But on Sunday, the rock was rolled away, and against all odds, hope reappeared. Later, they figured out what had happened. And, and unlike the loaches, okay, he wasn't simply hiding out. He had really died. He really had died. And, and his limp and lifeless body was put inside that tomb. There was a rock placed over it. But with Sunday's sunrise, that rock was rolled away and the tomb was empty. And, and, it, and they knew it was true because time and time again, still possessing the marks on his hands from the nails and the, and, the, and the wound from the sword in his side, he kept reappearing. And he was not reappearing as some half-dead, somehow recovered survival of, survivor of a brutal failed assassination attempt, um, but as a vibrant, healthy, fully alive, fully functioning, Victor over the grave, victor over death. And by emerging from that tomb, Jesus demonstrated his victory, not only over death, but over its sin, the ultimate root of all of that. And, and here's the thing. This is the thing I want to draw our attention to this morning, 
It's this. His resurrection validated all that he taught, all that he said. Okay? By doing something that no more mere mortal could do, defeat death, he says to us today, he says, you know what? Listen to what I have to say. Okay? Trust me during these times. When I give you advice, listen to it. Place your hopes and dreams in me. Okay? Live by what I have taught you. Believe it. Do it. Okay? Don't settle for anything less. We're living in this world, a COVID-19 world, you know. And, and, and for many, you know, it, it, it means, you know, I mean, let's be honest. For some people, it just means sitting on the couch and binge watching your favorite TV show. You know, this is how you defeat the enemy. We can do this, right? You know, and, and uh, um, for, for some of us, we have this weird experience now of masking up in public places and, and we're playing this strange new game of Mother May I when we go to the checkout at the grocery store. We have to wait our turn and Mother May I take a step forward, you know, type of thing. And, 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 but for others, there's real fear. For others, there's the experience of suffering with this disease. And for some, they've experienced death in their families. And, and for, for many, many people, it, it's, re, it's resulted in joblessness and in a, in a bleak, economic outlook. And, but, and the truth is this disease is absolutely deadly. As of this past week, COVID-19 is now the second leading cause of death in, in our country, uh, just right behind heart disease, just a tick behind it. Lots of people are dying. In New York City, there, there are, every day there's mass graves, five days a week, they're, they're doing mass, these, these mass graves on this place called Heart Island off the Bronx. And, and uh, and, and, and it not only punctuates the human you know, uh, carnage that's going on in that city, but it also points out the inability of people to properly mourn for their lost loved ones. These are tough times. And, and so it got me thinking, you know, what would Jesus say to a COVID-19 world? What would he have to say to us? And, and, and I, think, I think there's a couple things I want to point out that he'd say. The first is this. It's just general. This pandemic is a wake-up call. It's a, it's a wake-up call. He would ask us, doesn't this little pathogen, this little thing, convince you okay, that you need to be prepared for the inevitable? There's a whack coming for everybody. Everybody gets whacked in this place. And, and, and Jesus says, trust me, I survived the whack. Okay? I experienced that too. But I'm the resurrected one. I'm the one that overcame. Trust me when I tell you, you can rely on me. I'll make sure you get through it. Jesus says to our COVID-19 world, he says this, I am the resurrection and the life, okay? Anyone who believes in me will live even though he will physically die. The death is not the end. It's the beginning. It's a new beginning. And he said this, and he says this to us today, here on this earth, you will have much trouble. There will be hard times that you'll experience in this life. But in me, you can have peace. Trust in me. Put your trust in me because I have overcome the world. Take heart. Take courage because I'm the one that overcomes. The resurrected Jesus says, trust me. Trust me in the midst of death and you will live. You will live. And even in a troubled world, take heart, be courageous. You can even have peace in the midst of the storm. Okay, develop a faith that informs your face. Okay, do that. That'd be one of the things he'd say. But let's be real. Leading up to this coronavirus pandemic, okay, we, our whole world, okay, at least on a, on a kind of a, if you watch the media, and stuff, okay? We've been living in an era of tribalism, okay? And, and these tribes have formed around a lot of different things. It's national tribalism, it's cultural tribalism, it's political tribalism, and, 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 and there was a move in our world where these tribalists were screaming, okay? They're all screaming, and, they're, and they were saying, if you're not in my tribe, then I don't, then I don't just disagree with you, I hate you. Isn't that true, that that's been going on in our world? And, and the media and social media has just thrown gas on that fire. 
and, 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 and we, we're all shouting, shouting into these echo chambers, and, and the tribalists are saying, uh, you know, th my mind is already made up, and you're an idiot if you don't agree with me. That was the move that we went into this with. And it seems to me that the further you go out to the left or to the right in, the, in, this, in this, this, this conflict, facts seem to make no difference at all, and truth as a category seems to be gone. This, the message is this, you know, our way is the truth. Our way is the path to the good life. And you might think that these tribes could unite, okay, it, when, when we have a common enemy that doesn't respect what tribe we belong to. It, it's an equal opportunity pathogen, okay? But sadly, you, you'd be wrong about us uniting and the fight seems to be ramping up again, okay? And, and the next battle will be fought over the reopening of the economy. Now, everyone agrees that the economy needs to be reopened, okay? Nobody would disagree with that. That's a given. We can't go on like this forever, okay? The coming battle isn't about whether or not the economy should be reopened, okay? The coming battle is going to be fought over how and when to do that, okay? And, and, and here's what my hope is. My hope is that smart people, competent people, and compassionate people with a strong moral compass will guide us through that process. But I fear it won't go that way. That's what I fear because of the, the whole backdrop to what we went into this with. And, and, but it made me wonder, what would the resurrected one say? What would he say to us, to our COVID-19 world, about reopening and creating a functional economy again, what, what would the resurrected one who said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, especially say to people who are saying, our way is the truth, our way is the way to get to the good life. What would Jesus say? And here's what I think he would say. First, he would bless us. I, he, he wants to bless us. In, in the reopening of this economy. He would say, I think he would say, listen, I've placed smart people, competent people in your midst, okay? Use what I've given you. I've given you people that, 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 are, that are smart. Help, and, and there's gonna be disagreements, but let's work it out in a smart way, okay? Please, because we have a responsibility. We are agents of change here. We have to do this. And I think he'd also say, Use the moral compass I've given you, okay? Practice competence. Practice compassion. Because without love, you are nothing. Without love, you can accomplish nothing, okay? Figure out a way to get back to work. Figure out a way to do it, but be smart about it and be compassionate about it. And, and that kind of effort will find my blessing. Because I want to bless you with this kind of but he'd also warn us that there are voices out there that would make us want to believe that financial opportunity and, and perceived success are the highest values, that it's all about the economy, that it's all about that. And the, to that, I believe the resurrected one would say, no, that's not, that's not it. He, said, he, he wants to bless us in this, for sure. But he also gives us warning to beware about certain things. And as we reopen, I think he would also give us a warning. And, and, and he would tell us to be, he wants to bless it, but he also tells us to beware of certain things. And like, here's how I know, because this is, this is something Jesus talked about. One day Jesus was talking to a group of people, okay? And, 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 uh, and he was talking about how misplaced inferior values can sometimes get a hold of our heart, okay? And the one who proved the truth of what he said by rising from the dead, said this. He said, watch out, beware, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Now, why did he say that? I think he said that because he knew that we need money to live. We do. We need, we need those kinds of resources to survive for sure. And we need to get back to work and, and, and get that flowing again. But he also knows that money is a sneaky thing. Money has a way 
of worming its way into our heart. And in order to develop this idea, he told him a story. He said this. He said the ground of a certain man produced a good crop. And this story really gets at the heart of some of the misunderstandings that we can develop about life, and especially our economic life. Um, in his teaching, Jesus doesn't say, this is a story about a powerful, clever, smart, industrious person. That's not, that's not what he, you know, somebody that engineers his own success. He starts in a different place. He starts with the ground. He said, the ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. It was the ground that produced the wealth. Now, the question is, who made the ground? God made the ground. Where he's going with this, the big idea is, is that everything you and I possess comes from the one who gave us the ground. And when it comes to us as Americans and the blessings we've all participated in and received, we need to remember our history, that we're a country of immigrants, mostly, okay? who are given the incredible blessing of coming to a region of God's vast world, okay, that had good ground, good natural resources, good opportunity. And it's easy for us to forget that sometimes. It's easy to forget that, that, that there are very industrious people who work an awful lot harder than we do and receive a whole lot less because they didn't have good ground to work. And let me speak personally about this. I tend towards this delusion that I'm in control, okay? That I'm the one that can manage my life, that, that I can go on as long as I want, you know, and, and that I'm in charge. And, 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 and often when life goes the way I want it, okay, I live with this false idea that I'm in control. There was an email that went around several years ago, and I, I blow the dust off it every once in a while because I think it just, is, it just speaks of so much truth in life. And, and it's about dogs and cats, okay? And, and uh, um, um, we'll talk about dogs first, okay? This is, a dog, this is a journal of a dog's life, okay? A dog, 8 a.m., dog food. Oh, my favorite thing, okay? Okay, 9.30, a car ride. My favorite thing. Yes, 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 yes. 10.30, a walk in the park. My favorite thing. 12 o'clock, lunch, lunch. My favorite thing, okay? 3 o'clock, I'm wagging my tail. This is my favorite thing. I love it, I love it. 5 o'clock, milk bones. Milk bones, my favorite thing. 11 o'clock, sleep, sleep. My, my favorite thing. Then you come to a cat's life. Cat's life, here's his diary. Day 983 of my captivity. My captors continue to taunt me with bizarre little dangling objects. They dine la lavishly on fresh meat while me and the other inmates uh, are fed some hash or these dried nuggets of some kind. And, and, and the only thing that keeps me going is my dream of escape. And, in, in an attempt to discuss them, I vomit once again on the, on the carpet. And, and today I decapitated a mouse and dropped its little headless body at their feet, hoping it would strike fear into their hearts and clearly demonstrate what I'm capable of. However, they merely made these condescending little remarks about what a little good hunter I am. Losers. A dog and a cat and a sense of entitlement. And I was thinking about this. You know, when dogs do a bad thing, right? They know it, right? Right? They know it. You ever see a cat repent? I'm just saying, okay. Cats can't repent. You know why? Because I've just heard this. Uh, someone told me this, cats are evil. I mean, that's just, you know. Cats have this illusion that I'm entitled to stuff, and if I don't get what I want, my captors have done something wrong. Now, I'm joking, okay? Um, I, it's a joke, okay, you cat people. I'm sorry, but, um, but like cats, 
we can learn to, we can tend to live like we're entitled to certain things, okay? We, we live as if we have an, ex, that we have a right or something, that the economy is always going to go up and it's never going to back up, okay? Um, that, that we have a right, the older we get, that our bodies are just going to you know, be younger and smoother and, and stronger and slimmer, right? And, and, uh, and, and if we, if, if we want to buy a house, prices are supposed to drop right when I want to buy, and then they're supposed to go up every year from there on out, right? And, and um, that's why Jesus taught us to have a bigger dream, an expanded vision for what it means to live and to breathe and to have our being on God's great ground that he's given us. He made this ground for us to stand on. So Jesus starts this story, and he says, watch out. Take care. Be on your ground, on your guard. He says, the ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. It wasn't the guy that produced the crop. We have this idea that it's all engineered by me. You know, I'm smart enough. I'm strong enough. I'm clever enough. But Jesus says the ground is the beginning point. And so this ground produces great wealth for this guy in Jesus' story. And, and the man, you know, he, he's so wealthy that he ends up with a problem. He doesn't know what to do with it all, okay? And, and, and he's reflecting on his situation. And, and, and notice what happens next. And notice the language that the man uses to reflect on his situation. He says, he thought to himself, what shall I do? I have so much. Um, I, I'm so successful. I have no place to even put it all to store my crops. And then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And, and there I will store all my grain and all my goods. And then I'll say to myself, relax. You have plenty of good things laid up for many, many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. Relax. Did you notice the language, the pronouns? It's I, me, my barn my stuff stored up for myself. They suggest that he's saying, I'm the one that's in control. And God says in the story, he says, no, you're not. At the end of the day, you're not. He says in the story, Jesus says, this night, your life will be required. Tonight. Now. That word required. It's an interesting word from the, it's taken from the financial arena of Jesus' time. And, and, and in the, it's a word that would be used by a lender that describe what the time when a loan became due, when the money is required back. And, and God is saying to this man in the story, and I think he's saying to our COVID-19 world, everything you have is all on loan. It's a loan. None of it's yours. None of it. It's not your stuff. It's not your body. It's not your mind. It's not your education. You didn't engineer it. The ground produced it. Okay, And it's all coming due this night. Tonight, he's saying to this man, you'll return to the ground that produced all these good things that were loaned to you. Now, it, it, because he wasn't living in a COVID-19 time, you can imagine what this man's memorial service would be like, right? You know, it, it, it's easy to predict how it would play out. Lots of people would come to it. They would gather. He's a respected and admired man because he was so successful. Everyone comes to a service. It, when he dies, before they put him in the ground, they all go to his casket. And over his body, they say the same things. People say this all the time. They look at the body, and they say, oh, he looks so peaceful. He looks so peaceful. Well, sure, he's dead, right? And, and uh, um, the, kind of a foolish thing to say. They, eulogize, they would eulogize him for sure, you know, because he was such a great man in their eyes. And they laud him with these words, you know, visionary, leader, entrepreneur, you know, uh, successful, all these things. And then they all go home. And the casket gets put in the ground. 
we would tend to admire a man like that. And Jesus knows that, and that's why he's telling the story. And, but in Jesus' story, a different summary is made of this man's life, okay? Because he was a stuff-collecting and God-neglecting kind of guy. And so this messenger of God comes and summarizes this life with one word. One word. A four-letter word. The word fool. Fool. He said, you're... You fool, this night, your soul, your life, which were just loans, okay, will be required of you. Now, all you, you got all this stuff stored up for yourself, but where is it going to go? You don't get to take it with you. It was just loaned to you. It's all going to go to someone else. That's what, it's a harsh summary, right? Fool, a harsh summary. He lived with the illusion that he was in control of his life. And, 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 and then, like, like everyone on the planet, okay, there came a day when he discovered he wasn't in control. It, it, was, it happened that night. This night, your soul, your very life will be required of you. Now, we're living in a time, okay, when, when that, that's meant to remind us, okay? It's meant to remind us that we're not in control at the end of the day, okay? So Jesus' words to us, I think, are this, is this. For sure, work hard. For sure, rebuild, okay? It, it's okay to acquire wealth. It's okay. Just remember where it came from. Just remember who gave it to you. It was the ground of a certain rich man that produced such a good crop, okay? And Jesus would say to us, when you rebuild the economy, remember, it's all just a loan. It's just a loan. You don't get to keep it. You're not the owner. You're just the manager who borrowed and is using it. And at the end of the day, someone else will get all the stuff that you stored up for yourself. You came from the ground, okay? And, and from the ground, you prospered, okay? And, 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 and to the ground, you will return. It's, 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 Jesus is saying to us is this. Th there's only one thing that lasts, okay? Only one, and that's you, the real you, your soul, okay? It's the real you. He said in another place, he said, if you should gain the whole world, but you lose your soul, what does that profit you? It profits you nothing at the end of the day. And, 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 and the resurrected one says this, trust me with your very life. Put your hope and trust in me. My resurrection proved that I'm telling you the truth. Put your hand in my hand, and I will show you the way to the good life. I will show you the way to real life. So let's, let's reopen this economy, but let's do it in a way that he could bless it, okay? Do it with competence. Do it with compassion, valuing people over stuff. And let's beware, be careful, okay, to remember how to view our stuff, to keep in mind that it's all just a loan that's been entrusted to us by the one who planted us on this good ground. Let's pray together. Lord, we pray that you would bless this rebuilding effort, this reopening effort, that you would show us as a people, as, a, as nations, as counties, as states, um, to do this with competence and compassion, making sure that we value what you value, that, you value, that we value people who are eternal creatures created in your image over stuff. And Lord, teach us to beware, to be careful about how we think about ourselves and our stuff. Lord, we pray you'd give us our daily bread, that you'd meet our needs. Make us careful, Lord, to thank you for it when it comes. It's in your holy name we pray.
have searched the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise and treasure to faith are never
Valley, we're uh, Bridgeview Church in Valley Center, California, and, and I'm, I'm just so glad that you joined us today. And, and uh, I pray that you would um, um, that you would pray for the people in your community and, 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 and in our community. If there's any way that we can help you physically, um, spiritually, emotionally, we want to know about that. If we can pray for you in any way, just let us know. We're going to do one more song. Thank you for joining us. God bless. I lose the fight, try my best, but just don't get it right. Mm -hmm. Well, I talk a talk, yeah, I don't want to miss the moments right before my mm -hmm. Somebody with a hood that I could have helped, somebody with a hand that I could have helped, when I just can't see past myself, Lord, Thank you.